Shalom, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> this is just a word of encouragement. You have a lot of people uh, speaking about the fact that, yes, as the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, they shall, in fact, become part of the house of Israel. However, they speak of it in a manner as though the Hebrews are no more Hebrews, but everybody is exactly the same. Now, we do know in the book of um, Galatians that it says that neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, there shall be all or one in the spirit. And this is true. When you are following the spirit of the Most High God, we are of one mind, one faith, one Father, one God. However, it does not eliminate the identity of who is a Hebrew. It's spoken on in the book of Romans that uh, the Gentiles are grafted in. Okay, and that's a beautiful thing. God, when Yeshua was on the earth, when Jesus came down, he told his disciples before he left, he said, preach my word in all the world. Preach my word unto all the world. As a matter of fact, Paul was made an apostle unto the Gentiles. And there is a certain amount of Gentiles that are coming in and being part of the house of Israel. But the Hebrew is a very distinct group of people. It is is not eliminated because of the Gentiles who are grafted in. And you have to be very careful about the craftiness, the subtleness of the enemies. Just the fact that a Gentile tried to argue that with me lets me know that once again, after suffering for 400 years, losing our identity, the world taking advantage, even a group that says they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan who have now moved into Jerusalem and are the Ashkenazis and the Khazars, okay, want you to believe that you are not a Hebrew, and now as God has awakened us and we find out who we are, now you have a group saying it doesn't make a difference. But I guarantee you, the majority of that group, you have to question, are you even a Gentile that has entered into the house of Israel? One of the things I would like to say to you, family, is to study your word, read, so that you can decipher the truth from somebody who is trying to make you believe it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, that wouldn't even be a conversation, okay? The Gentiles are grafted in, and let me give all praise, honor, and glory unto the Father, Yah, unto Yeshua Mashiach, the Jesus Christ, and to the Ruach Kakadesh, the Holy Spirit. All praise, all honor, all glory. Anything that the Father chooses to do is blessed. I honor it and back it 100%. But it did not eliminate your identity. When the Gentile made this statement, the first thing I thought was, are you truly of the house of Israel? We are told and have read in the book of Zechariah that, and that's only in one book. It is also in the book of uh, Ezekiel. It's in the book of Jeremiah. It's written about in chapter 30 in the book of Deuteronomy amidst others that God is coming for Judah and the rest of Israel. He is coming for his people. There will be other nations that are added in. That is a truth. Those are the Gentiles that believe the word of God. They have accepted Yeshua Hamashiach as their Lord and Savior. They believe in their heart. They confess it in with their mouth that he is the son of the most high God. He came down into the world. He preached the word of God. And he died. He was crucified. Died. Went into the grave for three days. And after three days, he rose and now sits on the right hand of power, the right hand of God. Okay. Those who believe it, they shall be saved. But I don't want to get distracted and caught up into a Gentile conversation. I just want you to know that it was the Gentile nations who had determined that they were going to remove the identity of the Hebrews. They were going to make us a no people. 
That's why we had no name. First they brought us here and they called us slave. Then they called us nigger. Then they called us Negro. Then they called us colored. Then they called us black. Then we became African American. Anything to distract and distort and to basically disavow the fact that we are the Hebrews. And as far as the fullness of the Gentiles, the Gentiles that the Most High Yah has brought in again, everything that God does is good. Everything God makes is good. And any people that God brings in, they are of God. They follow the spirit, the word of God. And they do become part of the house of Israel. However, that does not eliminate the elect. Now, with that being said, we also know that when the Father comes and gets us, and this is in the book of Zechariah between the 7th and 8th chapter, that two-thirds of this massive group of people, this exodus is going to take place from all over the world, leaving from the nations all over the world. As a matter of fact, it's going to overshadow the first exodus. The first exodus won't even be compared. There's no comparison to the second exodus because he's bringing home Israel from the four corners of the earth, from all the nations where they have been scattered. There are those who are in Israel now who claim to be Jews and are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. As a matter of fact, in the city of Tel Aviv in Israel, that is the largest gay population. They have a gay parade, gay pride parade every June. It is so obscene and so lascivious. It is shameful to even speak of the things they do. That's how you know it is not the holy city of God. One of the other things is when Israel is taken home, they dwell in peace. And when any nation comes up against them, it's God who fights against them. God said he will rain down hailstones, uh, fire, hail, blood on them. Okay, there will be a great earthquake and multitude of multitudes shall die in that valley of decision. Okay, so what they say now, you can tell just by um, when you compare to the word of God and who they are and where they are. It's just a lie. And it fits scripture. But to go back, the Gentiles who are part of Israel, you can liken it to the different groups of people right here in America. Everybody who was born and naturalized in America, and I'm just using metaphors, can say I'm American. But it does not change what nation they are from. Whether you have a so-called African-American, an Italian-American, a Mexo-American, a Latin American, they come under the heading of American, but their individual nation and who they identify with as a nation is not eliminated. And the Hebrews, they don't get uh, wiped out as a nation where we're just all one is no difference. No, in the spirit, we are one. In the spirit, there's neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female, bond nor uh, free. In the spirit, and this is true, let everything that God does be blessed. I don't want to get distracted because what it seems to me is that there are those once again who want to steal our identity. They want God grafted them in like adopted children. As a matter of fact, according to the word, it says 10 from the other nations shall grab hold of the cloak of one Hebrew because they realize God is with us and they want to go. And as long as it's blessed by God, as long as they receive the word of God and they take on that spirit that only God can give, they will be part of that house of Israel. But it does not eliminate who the Hebrews are. They are the elect. The Gentiles that are allowed to come in are grafted in like adopted children. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be encouraged. You have a lot of false prophets and false preachers out here who want to create confusion. They want to create division. My word is not for division. My word is to identify the fact that the Hebrews are waking up. The Hebrews are waking up. The sisters are called the daughters of Zion. The Hebrews are waking up as a nation. It is a worldwide thing. Okay. And that blessing 
Because when you read in Deuteronomy chapter 30, we have to go through the, we get the blessing, then we go through the curse, and then we go back into the blessing. As a matter of fact, when God makes his new covenant with us, he writes it on our inward parts. It's in our heart and in our mind that there's no need that any man teach another. And the other nations, those no nations, those no people who, who follow pagan ways, the no gods, they shall not be able to enter into that holy city. When you read the last book of the book of Revelations, you see without shall be dogs and whoremongers and sorcerers, those that lie. OK, there will still be nations outside of the city of God. They shall find no entrance into the house of Israel, nor the city of God. This is ordained by God. But those Gentiles who are brought in, may the Lord God add a blessing. Because God can do anything. Yah can do all that he chooses to do. But as far as you being part of the elect, as far as who the Hebrews are, there is no identity theft going on here. There is no confusion going on here. The Hebrews, the original house of Israel, stand and they are waking up. The blessings that God gives. You can't look at the blessings with thought of the way this world makes a person think of being blessed. Because the blessings that we experience as far as having homes and having lands and ability to thrive and feed ourselves and feed our children, to have health and peace, those are the blessings. I would never want to be a rich person in this world because even the rich in this world without God, in this, this world outside of the house of Israel, even the rich still go through tribulations and turmoil. What did their money profit them? What did their money profit them? But the riches that God gives, it's a spiritual riches. All those things that we have need of, God already is going to give us. He's going to give us. But these blessings are beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. As a matter of fact, according to the word, I has not seen nor have ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man all the things God has in store for those that love him. To be without disease, to be without fear, to be without worry, to be without stress, to be without somebody seeking after your life, a liar who you can't trust and you don't know who to trust. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. And everything that Yeshua HaMashiach, who is Jesus Christ, told us, he told us because he heard it and saw it from the Most High God. And we can trust in him. In order to ensure that you are of that house, that mighty confederate house of Israel, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the Son of God, Yah. Elohim, he came down into this earth, was born in the flesh, walked, talked, preached among men, performed miracles, raised the dead, made the blind see, the lame walk. He loosed the tongue that could not speak, opened ears that could not hear. And when he died, after he was crucified, he laid in the grave for three days. And after three days, he rose and now sits on the right hand of God. And he commissioned men that they should go throughout the whole world and preach his word. And that word that he had was the word of the Father, Elohim. Believe in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. Yeshua is the son of the most high God. Commit that, confess that you are a sinner and you want to be saved and forgiven of your sin. Brothers and sisters, the other thing is that we have to look out for one another. Let this heart that was in Christ, let this mind that is in Christ be in you also, that we love one another. Israel, let this love grow in us, that we are restored as a nation. Let us pray and repent for one another, that God come and takes us out of these lands of our captivity. Let us fast and pray and look unto 
Our Father, look into the hills from which cometh thy help. Our help come from the Lord. And do not believe every spirit, every person that comes unto you. Do not. You have to find out, do they really believe in Yeshua HaMashiach? Do they believe in the word of God? Do they follow the word of God? Have they confessed their sins? Confess your sins one to another that we might be saved and cleansed. Let that word have its perfect work. You know the word of God will cleanse you. It will cleanse your spirit, your mind, and your heart like nothing else can do. And don't believe everybody just because they say, yes, if you are Gentile and you believe in Jesus Christ, one of the things you would know is that the Hebrews are a people and they are being awakened. And God is coming for us so that we are no longer in the land of our captivity, following after, stuck under a pagan rulership among the people that are no people. Because anytime you don't follow God, you are nothing. In the book of Ezra, he called them less than spittle. And that's the word of God. But brothers and sisters, let's love one another. Let's restore one another by repenting and asking God to come in, to come in and take us home. We have to repent of our sins, of the sins of one another, of the sins of our ancestors, that our Father may hear from heaven. That he look and hear from heaven and let us fast and pray. Fast and pray, brothers and sisters, because the time draws nigh. And we don't want to be found outside that gate. We don't want to be found outside that gate. In my last video, I told you God gave me a vision. And I saw the earth hurtling into this clean, clear water. And I know that water was the word of God, the spirit of God. And that his word was going throughout the whole world. And the time of the Gentiles, when it comes to an end, Israel awakens God coming back for us. And we're not going to be in this world of our captivity. It's going to change. It's not going to stay the same. Brothers and sisters, you be encouraged. Repent of your sins. Believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. Preached, walked the earth, was crucified, died, and after three days rose from the grave and now sits on the right hand of God. Follow his word. Don't follow my word. You follow the word of God. Let God be true and all men be liars. Don't let anybody trick you. Study, brothers and sisters, and pray for one another. Call down a holy fast that that spirit of God may work within you a mighty work. And that we help each other, strengthen each other, encourage one another. Ask that the gifts of the Holy Spirit come upon you. Ask that those gifts come upon you. I want you to be blessed, refreshed, and walk in the light, the truth of his word, his spirit. And let all other men be liars and God be true. Ask for the spirit of the Lord, Yeshua, he's at the door of your heart. Knocking and any man that opened that door, man being male or female, he will come in and sup with you. He'll make his home with you. He will walk and talk with you. You be at peace. Be at peace. You are Israel. You are a Hebrew. And let no man steal your reward. Shalom.